Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, it is so great to have you. I'm Antoinette, a New Zealander living in Germany. In this video today, I am going to be talking about things that you see all the time in New Zealand that you hardly ever see in Germany. Okay, so I'm just going to get straight into it. Something that you hardly ever see in Germany, a German woman walking around with these big, expensive, flashy diamond engagement rings. It's just not really a thing in Germany, it's not really done here. So in New Zealand and most other Anglo-Saxon countries from what I'm aware of, it is considered normal and just kind of expected for a man to spend two months of his salary on his fiance's engagement ring. And this is just a minimum. So a lot of men spend way more than that on their fiance's engagement ring. I find this absolutely ridiculous. I'm not a materialistic person. I don't understand the logic behind this. So traditionally in New Zealand, when a woman gets engaged, she will receive a diamond ring, which she will wear on on her left hand on this finger here and then when she gets married she will receive just like a wedding band and usually later she will get the engagement ring and the wedding band fused together. Not all women do this but this is typically what a New Zealand woman would do and the man will also just get a wedding band which he will wear like all the time. In Germany it's a little bit different. This is just what I have researched so if you are a German woman watching this and this is not how you do it at all please let me know in the comment section. So from what I have researched when a German woman gets married she will receive an engagement band which she will also wear on her left hand and it's usually just a plain kind of band like white gold, rose gold, something like that and then when she gets married she swaps that same engagement ring onto her right hand and wears it on this finger which um, I just I love that I think it's just so so simple so lovely and I like that so much better than a man having to fork out so much money for this blingy diamond engagement ring and so you do not see a German woman with these flashy blingy engagement rings you see them usually with a simple band mostly on their right hand. So when my husband and I got engaged, like almost 10 years ago now, because he's from Germany, I'm from New Zealand, we were just like, we'll just do whatever we want to do. Who cares about tradition? So we kind of went a little bit with the New Zealand tradition in the way that he did buy me an engagement ring, but I did not want him to spend crazy amounts of money on my engagement ring. He couldn't afford it anyway. He was like 24 and he just spent a year backpacking around New Zealand. So he did not have the money to throw around on a ring. So we went to a little vintage jewelry shop in Poland. He bought me the cutest, most beautiful little ring. I absolutely loved it and I still do. I don't even really wear it anymore because I find it quite uncomfortable. So I just wear a plain white gold wedding band with a tiny little diamond in it. And I wear this every single day and I love it and I wear this on my left hand because that's the tradition in New Zealand. I honestly don't believe that just because a man spends thousands and thousands of euros or dollars on a big blingy diamond ring that he loves you anymore. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion but personally I prefer the German tradition. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Okay so another thing that I personally haven't seen a lot of here in Germany and this really disappoints me I haven't seen a wide range of ethnic dolls here in Germany. So I have been into a lot of toy stores because I have two children. I have a little girl who is seven who loves dolls. The majority of dolls that I have seen in toy stores here have blonde hair and blue eyes. Boring. Nothing wrong with blonde hair and blue eyes, don't get me wrong, but I would love to see more of a variety of different types of dolls. And you don't see that very much in Germany. It's even quite hard to find a dark haired doll. My little girl has dark hair and she would prefer to have a doll that looks like her. And you know, you do find dark haired dolls, but most of them have blonde hair. I'm somebody who has taught my children that diversity is something beautiful, it should be celebrated. And for my little girl to go into a toy store and see mostly blonde haired, blue eyed dolls, what, what does that say about diversity? It's saying that blonde haired, blue eyed dolls are better. My sister is married to an absolutely amazing African American man and her two children are obviously mixed. My little girl Amelia 
absolutely idolizes my sister's little girl Sylvie who is you know her cousin and she has beautiful dark skin and really really curly hair African American hair and Amelia thinks she's amazing and I would love to find Amelia a doll that looks like Sylvie she would be so happy with that but it's almost impossible to find a doll that looks like Sylvie um, because there's not really many of them there'll be maybe one token black doll that you will see in a toy store maybe one or two but there's definitely not the range of um, skin colors that you would see in New Zealand in a toy store Amelia also has a really good friend who is half Japanese and I'm sure Amelia would love a Japanese doll but I can't find Japanese dolls anywhere so I don't know maybe it's different in bigger cities here in Germany but from what I am seeing here, there's definitely not a range of different ethnicities when it comes to children's dolls. Um, I would say, like, I'm not saying that you can't get dolls with darker skin here in Germany. I'm sure you can, and I have seen them, but you hardly see any of them. You know, Germany, like New Zealand, is a big melting pot, and I think that it is a beautiful thing, and I think it should be celebrated, and there should be more of a colorful range of dolls available to little girls or boys here in Germany. So that's just my opinion. And yeah, I would love to hear your opinion on this in the comment section below. Okay guys, so another thing that you just don't see much of at all here in Germany, and that is cars driving around with dents in them and you know, scratch paint and just old beaten up cars. You just barely ever see this in Germany. And in New Zealand, you see this all the time. So as I've mentioned in a previous video, my Germany versus France video, when we visited the Alsace region, an absolutely beautiful region of France, just over the borderline from Germany I saw so many cars like beaten up cars with dents and scratches and that kind of thing and I noticed this the minute that we drove over the German French borderline and I was just like quite amazed I just couldn't believe the difference I noticed it straight away Germans just take so much pride in their cars and they like to drive around in cars that are in good condition without scratches and dents um, and I have no idea why this is, whether Germany just has really good like insurance, car insurance. If a German scratches their car or they're involved in like a minor car accident, it's most likely they will go straight away and get that car fixed and so they're not going to be driving around with the dent in the car. In New Zealand you see cars in all different conditions from really nice flash cars to really really run down cars with rust and dents and scratches and everything and it's totally normal to drive around with dents in your car in New Zealand, no one really cares. People take so long to go and get their car fixed, some don't even get their car fixed after they've like had a minor accident. Um, and in Germany you just don't see this. I think it's kind of like a status symbol in Germany, kind of like a pride thing. Germany is known for producing incredible cars and Germans like to live up to that reputation and they wouldn't be seen dead driving around in an old beaten up car. Okay guys, so last but not least, something that you don't see much of at all in Germany, at least in the area of Germany where I live, and that is little convenience stores. In New Zealand and when I was in the United States, when I lived in Australia, you just see so many of these like little convenience stores like 7-Eleven. In New Zealand we have Foursquare, we have our little corner dairies and um, it's just a normal part of Kiwi culture. But um, in Germany, I really don't see a lot of these stores. Actually, in some of the bigger German cities that I visited, I have seen some of these convenience stores, but it's not very common. You don't see a lot of them in Germany. In New Zealand, we have something called a corner dairy. It is just so Kiwi, part of our culture. It is like a little privately owned shop, like a little store on like a street, sort of a suburban street. And we just have so many of these like almost every street has a corner dairy, like I'm exaggerating a little bit, but um, there are a lot of little corner dairies in New Zealand. And these little corner dairies sell things like bread and eggs and milk, and um, you can get um, an ice cream and a cone. Um, New Zealand kids love to save up their pocket money and then walk to the corner dairy and spend it on lollies or candy, whatever you want to call it. That's just such a great memory from my childhood. We also have Foursquare, which is like a mini supermarket. So it's definitely bigger than a dairy, um, but it's a lot smaller than a supermarket. It just has kind of like the basics that you will need 
and it's usually a little bit more expensive than the supermarket but it's a lot more convenient so if you want to just grab something really quickly you don't want to spend a long time in a big supermarket looking around then Foursquare probably has everything you need um, it doesn't have like any of the fancy gourmet stuff but all the basics you can get from a Foursquare when I was living in Australia 7-Eleven is basically on every corner so um, yeah I don't know like if you're German and you're watching this and you live in a bigger city do you see many of these little convenience stores like maybe I'm wrong maybe I just didn't see a lot of them but um, there's definitely not a lot in the area of Germany where I live. So guys, that's all I've got for this video. If you're an expat living in Germany, I would love to know what are some of the things that you hardly ever see in Germany that you see a lot of in your country. Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. I would love you to consider subscribing to my channel. Feel free to connect with me on Instagram and I will see you again really soon. Bye.